Easter is a time to reflect on the faithfulness of God, who sent Jesus into the world to die so that we might live. Jesus showed us the heart of God. When Jesus walked this earth, He healed the sick, freed the oppressed, and demonstrated love and grace. Yet Jesus was despised and rejected by mankind. He was wounded for our transgressions, and He was bruised for our iniquities. He was willing to endure it all, though, for us. We were the joy that was set before Him. He came to save us, to heal us, and to redeem us. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Today He is still pouring His love and grace on people, healing them from diseases and rescuing them from sin. Jesus is freedom. He is healing. He is love. He is hope. He is alive. Jesus came so that you might have life and life more abundantly. This Easter, may you step into the fullness that Jesus provided for you. Happy Easter from Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College. Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. Jesus forgave us of all sin, past, present, and even future sin. Andrew brought good news to me. I could understand the Bible more the way he taught it. Jesus forgave you one time, and that's for everything. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today's our Good Friday broadcast. My staff has the day off uh, in observance of Easter, and praise God for the resurrection of Jesus. You know, I think it's great that we set aside a certain time to honor this, but the truth is I think about the resurrection and, and the resurrection power that He's placed on the inside of us. I try and operate in that every single day of my life. So for me, every day is Easter. I celebrate it, but this is a time that we specifically set it aside. And I tell you, there's, it's just awesome. But we've given our employees a day off, so please remember that you can still Go to our website and get all of these materials. I'm teaching on hardness of heart, and I've got this book in English and in Spanish. I've got CDs and DVDs, and you can still go to my website and receive those things. Actually, you can go get downloads, and you could download this teaching in audio format uh, for free off of our website. So you can still have access to it, but our phone center will not be open today. So I've been talking about what is a hardened heart. It's basically just being more sensitive to the natural realm or natural things than you are to spiritual things. It's being insensitive towards God and dominated by just natural things. And I've shared that, yes, according to Hebrews chapter 3, sin will harden our hearts towards God. So if you're living in sin, quit doing it if you want a sensitive heart and if you want to see God's best come to pass in your life. But I've also made a major point this week that sin isn't the only thing that hardens our heart. Over in Mark chapter 6, the passage that I've been teaching from basically for two weeks, in verse 52 it says, For their heart was hardened because they considered not the miracle of the loaves. It wasn't because they were in sin. It wasn't because they were plotting some terrible thing and they were just rebelling at God. No, they were doing what God told them to do, but they were just occupied with trying to save their life in the midst of a storm. Their entire attention and focus had been uh, arrested and taken control of by circumstances. They were just looking at the natural realm. It wasn't sin that they were involved in. It was just normal human uh, activity, leaning upon the flesh, trying to figure out how they were going to survive this storm. So the point I've been making is that anything that grabs our attention and dominates us can harden our hearts towards God. It doesn't have to just be sin. Whatever you think upon, or let me use the verse that's in uh, uh, Mark chapter 6, verse 52, says... For they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. The word consider there means to study, ponder, deliberate, examine, think upon, focus upon, meditate upon. Whatever arrests your attention, whatever captivates 
and occupies your focus, you're going to become sensitive to. And what you fail to focus on, you become hardened to. And I also used Hebrews chapter 11. This is one of my favorite scriptures, verse 15, where it says, And truly, had they been mindful of the country they came out of, they might have had opportunity to have returned. That is linking for Abraham and Sarah returning to Ur of the Chaldees would have been sin. So their temptation to sin was linked to what they thought upon. If they don't think upon it, they can't be tempted with it. And this is one of the points that I've been making the last few days is that you have to be so focused upon God and the promises of God. Like if you're believing for healing, you have to focus on what God says. That if you believe, you receive when you pray, you speak unto your mountain and it will obey you, that you will have whatsoever you say. You have to focus on those promises more than you focus on the word of a doctor, more than you focus on what has happened to somebody else, more than you focus on your own thoughts and your own feelings. It's really that simple. And the problem is that most of us consider everything else. We had a woman, Connie Weiskopf is her name. I've got a healing journey about her. And she had cancer And uh, when she got the diagnosis of cancer, all of her friends told her that she ought to go on the Internet and she ought to learn everything that she possibly can about cancer. And she felt like the Lord just spoke to her and said, no, do just the opposite. Don't learn about cancer. Learn about healing. And she made a determination that she was going to get into the Word of God and she was going to listen to all of the teaching that she could about healing. And that's when she came across my teaching She came and asked me to pray for her, and I prayed with her, and praise God, she was miraculously healed. But the reason I bring that up is to say that, see, this is what most people do, is when they have a hurt or a pain, they'll go look on the Internet, they'll research something, find out what the problem is, they'll self-diagnose, and they'll focus on this and listen to this is what this person says you should do. Here's the treatment you should get. And they accumulate all of this junk And if it doesn't work, then they go to the Word of God and they say, God, you know, you said if I resist the devil, he'll flee from me. And so they pray a prayer. And then they say, why isn't it working? Why haven't I seen everything happen? Because you've spent more time considering all of these natural things and what everybody else had to say rather than what God had to say. I'll be criticized over this. I know that there's people that think that you are supposed to absolutely exhaust every human way of dealing with things and only use God in a case of an emergency. But I don't believe that that's true. I believe that Jesus has healed all of our sicknesses. It says over in Exodus that He will take all sickness away from the midst of us, all sickness. Psalms 103, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of His benefits, who forgives all thine iniquities, who heals all thy diseases. And on and on I could go with things like that. 1 Peter 2, 24, by His stripes you were healed. If you would get to where you were more focused on those things, then you are what the doctor says. And dear old Aunt Susie, who had the same thing and never got healed of it and just suffered the rest of her life. And if if you'd quit thinking about all of that stuff and focus instead on what God says, then what God says would dominate you more than that natural realm. But most people are hardened towards God, insensitive towards God, because they live in the natural. They focus on the natural. They are looking for a natural cure more than they're looking for a spiritual cure. And I'm not talking about just healing, but I'm talking about finances, cure for your problems, your depression, your discouragement, and everything else. They look to all of these things. We are just humanistic. We look for answers only in the physical realm. When the truth is that, man, God has equipped us to live an absolutely victorious life over anything and over everything. I'm not against doctors. If it weren't for doctors, all of the Christians would be dead. I can guarantee you the vast majority of the body of Christ do not believe God for healing. They may, they may pray and ask God for healing, but their faith is in the doctors. I'm not against doctors. I'm not saying that doctors are of the devil, but I am saying that medical knowledge and stuff is human uh, 
wisdom, it's human ability. And I'm not saying that that's wrong. If there is a cure, if there's a vaccination against something, I'm not saying that you don't take it. God has given people wisdom, and many times that wisdom has translated into they found out that there were germs that were caused these things, and so you wash your hand, you take some precaution. I'm not saying that those things are bad, but I'm saying it's natural, it's human. And yes, use those things to the degree that it's wisdom. But did you know that there's also a lot of bad things that happen? I've read articles that the number one place to get an infection in the United States is in the hospital, that there is a huge percentage of people who die through complications from surgery and, and staff infections and things that they get in the hospital. I've actually read... Um, articles before by nurses telling people that if you've got a loved one in the hospital, you go and stay in the hospital with them because there's a shortage of workers and sometimes there's mistakes made. I've had in my line sometimes as many as 10 or 15 people in a row who everything that they wanted me to pray for were complications because the doctors botched the job. They took the wrong uh, uh, medications and it had complications from their medication and things like this. Again, I'm not against doctors, but I'm saying let the people that don't know how to believe God use the doctors. They're under, they're underpaid. Well, they're, I'm not necessarily underpaid, but they're overworked. There's a shortage. There's so many people needing their services. Man, just believe God. I'll get criticism for that. I'm not against doctors. I'm not against you going, but I am saying that I don't believe that you use God as a last resort. I use God as a first resort. I have walked in healing now for nearly 50 years, and I don't get sick. I don't believe in getting sick. I don't accept sickness, and I've had things happen. I had something. I'm, I'm not going to tell you what it is because if I say it, people will start writing in and telling me what it was, and you better be careful this one. <laughs> but I had some things happen to me that bothered my feet, and I had some real pain in it. And you know what I did? I believed God, and then I started acting on it. And I started walking seven to eight miles a day, and praise God, I just worked through that thing. Again, I'm not against anybody. I know that there's people that'll think somehow or another, I'm trying to discourage you from going to a doctor. I'm trying to get you to where you don't accumulate every negative thing about your condition and study it and examine it and pile up this mound of unbelief. And then after you've read all of these things and it says it's incurable, you're going to die, then you struggle because... Why is it so hard to believe God? It's because you've heard all of this unbelief. You've heard every negative thing. You've been told by a thousand different things that you've read that it's impossible, and it's not. I remember a woman who came to me one time and had cancer, and uh, she was a young woman. She had just been married a short period of time. She told everybody, I want 12 kids. And she and her husband were ministers, so they were out on the road traveling. We heard that she was pregnant. When she got back, she went to a doctor and found out it was a tubular pregnancy and she had cancer. And they were going to, the only uh, solution was to remove all of her female parts, a complete hysterectomy. And she was just a young girl in her early 20s. And if she had all of these parts removed, she was not going to be able to have children. And so she was just devastated. And she came up to me. And she was crying. I had been talking to someone. I was actually telling a joke. She tapped me on the shoulder. I was laughing and turned around. And here was this woman crying. And she said, Andrew, did you hear what the doctors told me? And I just left. I didn't do it to spite her. I had just been telling this joke. And I, it just came out. <laughs> and I just laughed. And I said, cancer is not no big deal with God. I said, it's not harder for God to heal cancer than it is to heal a cold. And when I said that, it's just like you'd slapped her. She just stopped crying. She looked at me and she says, what are you saying? And I said, men are telling you that this is impossible, but nothing is impossible with God. And he gave you a promise that he heals all of your diseases, all of your sicknesses. You do not have to let them take out all of your female parts if you don't want to. Just believe and receive your healing. And this woman was shocked. So she invited Jamie and me over to her house. She fed us a meal. I talked to her and her husband. And she says, what are you saying? And I just explained. I said, look, 
If you want to go and let the doctors do a complete hysterectomy, there is nothing wrong with that. It's not sin. And if that's the direction you want to go, I said, believe God. But I said, you aren't going to have children. You could adopt children, but you aren't going to give birth to children if you don't have all of your female parts. And she says, what other option do I have? And I said, well, the Word of God promises you that you get... You, you are healed. By His stripes, you were healed. It's already done. It's not a matter of will He healed you. He's already healed you. Will you receive it? And anyway, she asked me to pray with her. So Jamie and I prayed with her. And I said, look, she says, so what should I do? And I said, I can't tell you what to do because it's not my body. And I can't tell you what you have to believe. I said, if you want to go get a hysterectomy, I said, that's fine. God's God loves you, but this is going to be the consequence. And she says, can I just believe for healing? I said, of course you can. Now, see, this is where some people criticize me. They say, no, you can't just believe God. I believe you can just believe God. Anyway, this woman chose not to go through with that because she believed that God wanted her to have a dozen kids. And when she did, the doctors hit the roof. They pronounced that she was going to die. There was zero chance of her living and on and on it went. And they brought her page after page of legal documents that she had to sign that would absolve them of all liability. And it was a bad scene. But anyway, she went ahead and just trusted God, got completely healed. And I've lost touch with them. This has been 25 or 30 years ago or something. I'm not sure the exact length of time, but I've heard that they've had four children many years ago. And I don't know how many children that she's got now. And she, she, gave birth to all of these children. I'm telling you that if you accumulate all of the unbelief, if you go and let people speak all of this stuff over you, it's going to be a hindrance to your faith. And I, again, am not against doctors. I prayed with a man one time. He was a carpenter and he was driving a cement nail into the concrete and the nail broke. He hit it so hard, it broke. It ricocheted off of the concrete and flew up and hit him in the eye. And he came to me with this nail sticking out of his eye and wanted me to pray for him. And so I did pray for him and the bleeding stopped and the pain lived. <laughs> he still had a nail sticking out of his eye. And I said, you know what? I believe that God has healed you, but you've got to get this nail out of your eye. I said, do you want me to pull it out or would you rather have somebody who knows what they're doing with some instruments pull this thing out? And he said, I think I'll go to the doctor. So he went to the doctor and had it removed. And they were amazed that he didn't lose his sight and there wasn't any permanent damage. I believe that God did a miracle. But you know what? There's just some natural things. I broke an arm one time and I had the arm set. And it's not because I didn't believe... Well, this is before I actually understood about healing, but it was just a natural thing. There was a bone broken and you needed to put it in place so that it would heal properly. And I'm not against stuff like that. But I am against doctors that go in and say, this is incurable and you're going to die. Go home. There is no hope. And in the natural, that may be true. And that may be what the facts say, but that's not what the truth of the Word of God says. And when you reach a place that the doctors can't meet your need, then you need to be able to shut off that and consider, study, ponder, deliberate, examine, think upon, focus upon what God has to say more than all of the things that the doctors have to say, the lawyer has to say, your mate, your friends, your parents, your children, or anything else. You have to get to where you let God be true and every man a liar, Romans chapter 3, verse 4. And I'm telling you, there's just not very many Christians who will be that committed to the Lord. If Abraham would have listened to everybody else's opinion, he never would have been able to receive strength to have a child when he was 100 years old and his wife was 91. But he considered not his own body now dead, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. You have to be fully persuaded. You have to get to where you don't consider things that are contrary to what God says. You don't plan for plan B and plan C. 
you have this escape route in case your faith doesn't work. You can always go do this and do that. You need to burn these bridges behind you and get so focused upon God that you're just considering what He has to say and you aren't taking anybody else's opinion about it. Let me use you another passage about Abraham. This is over in Hebrews chapter 11. I was there earlier in the week, and this is where it says in verse 15 that if they had been mindful of that country they came out of, they might have had opportunity to return. And I was teaching from that that you can't be tempted with something that you don't think. It says in verse 16, Now they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He hath prepared for them a city. And then look at this in verse 17, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. In other words, he was going to sacrifice his promise, the one that God said would have children that would be so numerous that it'd be like the stars in the sky or the grains of sand on the seashore. And the child that God promised that it would happen through, God told Abraham to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. He was about to kill his only avenue of receiving that promise. And it goes on to say in verse 19, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead from whence also he received him in a figure. You know, many, many years ago when my kids were little, I remember reading this and I put this in parallel with 2 Corinthians chapter 3 where it says that the things that we have as New Testament believers are so glorious that in compared to what we have, the Old Testament promises and prophets and people had no glory compared to what we have. And so what we've got is so much better that we should be able to believe God better. And I was actually reading these passages of Scripture and thinking, God, if you wanted me to actually sacrifice one of my sons, would I be able to do this? And I was thinking about this and trying to put on my best faith and think about, you know, that, man, God, I'll go anywhere. I'll do anything for you. And as I thought about it, I was imagining, envisioning what it would be like to kill your own son, thinking that that's what God wants you to do. Let me just say that this does not apply to us today. This was an Old Testament passage. God never, anyway, I'm not advocating that you sacrifice anybody, but I'm saying, would I be willing to do something like that? And I just couldn't even imagine. I couldn't imagine being the person that killed your own son and then going back home and Jamie says, where's Josh or where's Peter? And I'd have to say, oh, God told me to sacrifice. I was thinking about all of these things. I was thinking about what it would be like, the sorrow, the shame, the sadness, the guilt. And I thought of all of this stuff. And even though I put on my best face, faith face, I just said, God, I don't think I could do it. And I said, how did Abraham, how was he able to go so close to executing this? How could a man... faith when his faith is supposed to be inferior to what I have. And the Lord showed me right here, it says, accounting, this is, the word accounting means this is what he was thinking, that God was able to raise him up even from the dead from whence also he received him in a figure. The reason that Abraham was able to do this was because he never saw Isaac dead. He knew that he had to live. He had a promise that through Isaac, that he would have children as numerous as the stars in the sky or the grains of sand on the seashore, and he knew that Isaac was going to live. 
He didn't know if God was going to do something to stop it or if after the fact He would raise him from the dead, but he never saw Isaac dead. I saw my children dead, and that's the reason I couldn't put myself in his place and go through with it. Or another way of saying that is, I was too sensitive to the negative things that could come out of it. Abraham never saw Isaac dead. He never thought of this not working. He wasn't even tempted not to do it because he had disciplined his heart and his mind. His heart was so sensitive to God that he didn't even consider anything that was contrary. I considered all of the things that were contrary and came to the conclusion I couldn't do it. What you consider determines what your heart is dominated by. And the reason that we haven't been more dominated by God is because we're considering so many other things. I'd like to give you an invitation to join me on April the 24th and the 25th at Karis Christian Center in Colorado Springs. And my good friends Ashley and Carly Teredes are hosting a conference there. And it's going to be the Abundant Life event I'm going to be one of the speakers, and I tell you, Ashley and Carly, they're the ones that their little daughter, Hannah, was healed of an incurable disease, and they are preaching the Word of God. They're seeing great miracles happen. Remember, it's the 24th through the 25th at Karis Christian Center for the Abundant Life event. Ready to get more out of God's Word than ever before? We gladly announce the Andrew Womack Living Commentary. This continuously updated Living Commentary is now available exclusively as a download for both Mac and Windows at awmi.net. I want to encourage you to check out a brand new program that we created at Gospel Truth TV. This is an original program with Tony Dungy and James Brown. They're both at the top of their game. Tony is an award-winning, Super Bowl-winning coach. Uh, James Brown is uh, at the top of his game announcing sports things. I mean, they are awesome men. They do an interview on Beyond the Game with JB and Tony is what we've entitled it. And they interview these sports figures and share things with you that usually get cut out on the secular networks. These sports figures are going to share their heart with you about their relationship with the Lord, and I tell you, it'll be a blessing. So check it out, 9.30 a.m., 9.30 p.m., twice a day on Sundays on gospeltruth.tv. Andrew's complete series titled Hardness of Heart is available in either a CD or DVD album and a book in either English or Spanish. Each of these valuable resources is available for a gift of any amount when you write or call. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get this teaching. You can get these products as part of the Hardness of Heart package, which includes both books and your choice of either CD or DVD albums from both Hardness of Heart and How to Become a Water Walker. The Hardness of Heart package has a catalog value of $75, but you can receive all of these valuable resources for just $55. On today's broadcast, Andrew mentioned the healing journey of Connie Weisskopf. You can view her entire story as well as many others at awmi.net. This story is also included on the Healing Journeys Volume 3 DVD. Go to awmi.net to get your copy today. Our helpline is closed today to allow our employees to celebrate the holiday. But you can always visit our website where you can order ministry materials or become a Grace Partner online. On our website, you'll not only find materials from today's broadcast, you'll find a wealth of ministry resources available to you. If you prefer, you can order materials by writing us. Use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today.